Welcome to Cinemondo, Kathy and Mark. Yeah. That was a very chirpy, cute little intro for what is about a film that was very disturbing and horribly violent. <laughs> My I favorite. Saw, I saw the trailer for it at the theater when I went to see Late Night with the Devil. I said, well, that's an interesting trailer for this uh, low-budget Canadian slasher film called yeah. In a Violent Nature, yeah. directed and written by Chris Nash, his first film. And it is, you know, if you haven't seen it, I mean, it's on Shudder. It's a slasher film, but it's yeah. – has a different thing going on it, which makes take. it interesting. Yes. Yes. That's What's why cool it got my attention. It looked very different than what we're used to seeing. And a lot of reviews, I mean, some people who you know, would say, hey, they loved the idea of it and they thought it was really cool. And some people go, it's so boring. It's so dull. See, and I don't like, get that. I, right. I was expecting that and I did not find it boring at all. Like, I don't understand people to say that. It's. I love it when a director does something different. So he takes a slasher. This this slasher is very much in the Jason Voorhees vein. You know, he's yeah. he sort of comes back from the dead like he's buried, and something happens, and he gets up, and he's just going searching after these people that took a locket from his yeah. uh, resting place. And but the whole film is shot from behind him as he slowly trudges through acres and acres of forest and comes up on a field or comes up on some campers or comes up to a house, that kind of a thing. And so you really, it's, it's not jumps. It's not a hundred percent that, but it's probably like 80% that. Yeah. And, um, and it's just really an interesting take on, okay, you're part, you're hanging out with the serial killer. You're hanging out the murderer Mm -hmm. And you hear something off in the corner. People are talking or laughing. Oh, I'm going to start walking in that direction. So we follow yeah. him. It's really smart yes. and interesting. So uh, I thought it was great. I thought it was great. And I thought it just had an elegance in a weird way. I know it's weird to say that, but it just had this really intentional, like, I guess when, it's something, when I feel like something's intentional with, with the, the vibe even if it's just kind of more methodical, almost forensic viewpoint that it has in this of the serial killer, that to me shows you they're not just making a boring movie or they missed the mark. This is what they wanted to make. Exactly. So I was on board for it. So when I was watching, I'm like, this is what they wanted it to be. This is their intention. So when I saw it, and it had like they kept talking about it, it's just walking behind this guy through the whole time. It's like it wasn't. First of all, it's a lot less than I thought it was going to be because especially we'll see in the trailer we're gonna watch the trailer real quick so you can get a vibe for it yeah let's check that was gonna it out. be way more like i thought the whole thing was going to be just behind him like a video game we're just gonna see him but no it wasn't that we just no. had that viewpoint for a few of it and then we'd cut to you know we cut back and forth like like any good slasher you know? yeah so, and you get other characters who talk and you get so anyway uh and has yeah. a really interesting ending but let's take a look at the trailer yeah. we'll take a look at the trailer so you guys can get a vibe on it so let's take a look at it okay here we go wait where's the movie oh, here it is okay here we go. <laughs> <Whee! laughs> Victims. Yep. Of the ticking clock. Yeah. What the? <laughs> <laughs> Love that shot. Yeah. Some really beautiful pastel oh. settings with this creepy guy walking. <laughs> this is me. This is the Steam. Yeah. The showstopper. Oh. See what it is. Yeah. Animals don't get too hung up on reason. They just keep killing. Just keep going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. <laughs> it's very sad that someone had to die to for yeah. entertainment. <laughs> so. It's you get the sense of the methodical nature. If you remember that movie, It Follows, where you know somebody is mm -hmm. yeah. somebody slowly coming after you. It's sort it's of like that. It's relentless. And that's very compelling to me. Yes, like there's yeah. always something that's about to happen. And you yeah. get a sense like you just, you just this beautiful Canadian wilderness and like there's these beautiful lakes and all this gorgeous stuff. But there's this guy that's just yeah. all about killing and getting back what was taken from him. 
Basically. He had a good point. He had a reason. He's not yes. just sort of stupidly killing. He <laughs> has his reason. Uh, but, you know, I, I also like, I think it was the lead up. Like, you, you in a way kind of get inside his head a little bit. Not, it's not overly done at all. Like, there's, he right. just has his reason. You find out the reason later. But he's basically released when someone takes the, the necklace. That mm -hmm. was the only thing keeping him down, right? So once someone right. steals the necklace, you know, it's like, now it was time. You know, right. uh, so I like that you're you're following him and you have this sort of you're in a way kind of, OK, here we go. We're all the same. We're walking through this, you know, trying to find things. You see someone and in your head, you're kind of anticipating what would I do? What's he going to do? So I like that sort of putting you in the shoes of the killer in a way. But then they also still cut back to the victims. You're still kind of creating some characters that you're going to care about in a way. But they were all dickheads. So you don't really care. <laughs> or super, super stupid, you know, that one particular stupid. scene, like at the ranger station, you're oh, like, what are these idiots doing? I mean, like <laughs> so, I was so upset. Um, like, the ranger, they, a, they go up, they, these two guys, they go up to this ranger and the ranger knows about this guy. I think his mm -hmm. name was Bobby, I think. Right. Um, and he goes, oh yeah, blah, blah, blah. But he still does something really stupid. And you're like, of course you're going to get it. So they, there's so, so there's part of, it's like the slasher, the, the typical idiot slasher, uh, yes. you know, victims doing what they shouldn't be doing. Um, yeah. but there are some incredible kills in this movie. Oh, I mean, really methodical, <laughs> slow kills. That one you saw that, that, uh, the woman who's screaming, who was like by the yoga, the, yoga teeth, yoga. the yoga. She yeah. really just gets it really in a horrifying and you way. Know what makes it even better, <laughs> better. I, when I saw that, I was like watching it going, what is happening? These effects are practical. So yeah. we didn't see a bunch of CGI or anything. It was close up. You're seeing an actual prosthetic. You're seeing effects happen. And it's very, the guy is killing her in a very slow, methodical way. So it wasn't like this instant kill, like, wow, smash her head. It was like this big contortion thing, which was perfect for a yoga teacher. I could not believe my eyes. Now, until I seen Terrifier 3, I thought that was the worst thing I'd ever seen. <laughs> worst in a good yeah. way. And so yeah. Terrifier 3, and they, they went one step way, well, about 10 steps beyond that. But <laughs> it was still really something i've never seen before and so. also really well done like there's also a, a scene with um a wood splitter and oh, it's yeah. like the slow wood splitter and it splits the wood you know and like and the i'm watching up. going wow. what an incredible effect it looked 100 percent real it looks so real. like i was really like whoa and then there's that scene of the lake where there's these two women are chatting mm -hmm. by the uh, by the pier yeah. And he is on the other side of the lake and he just starts walking slowly and he goes underwater. And then the whole scene is very intense because, you know, he's slowly walking he's without in any, there. He doesn't have to breathe because nope. he's, uh, you know, undead and like, mm -hmm. oh, God, get out of there. Get out of there. So anyway, uh, th those kind of moments, slow, not a lot of music. It's just, past, you know, there's some music, but it's not like this big orchestral thing. It's just very subtle and it totally and works. A lot, of the, a lot of the kills are in broad daylight. Which makes yeah. it even weirder because you feel safe. Like that's the thing too. These people felt safe. Like we're in daylight. What's going to happen? We're on this dock in this beautiful lake, or we're in the woods and we're seeing this beautiful, you know, wilderness. And then you're like, oh, <laughs> you can do your yoga out there at the this hillside and looking out over <laughs> the field of view, and then not be and doing your yet. yoga. <laughs> you. And I'll uh, leave. One thing about the wood chipper scene uh, that was my only qualm with the whole movie. Oh, what was that? I felt like it was a missed opportunity. Well, now I know we they they begin this and it's a tiny bit of spoiler. The beginning with the the person's paralyzed, but he's fully aware. He just you know the guy basically breaks his spine or something, so he can't he he can't move or defend right. himself. But you know he's awake. He's aware of what's happening. So yeah. they start with you know when they when they show the wood chipper, he drags him into the wood chipper area and you see the wood the, right. not the chipper the log splitter right the log splitter yeah. I'm like. The fact that he cuts off one of his arms to check it, you know, or his hand or his arm or whatever. Yeah. Why did he go straight to the head? He had three more limbs left. Like I thought it would have been creepier <laughs> just one by one kind of, so he was just a torso. I mean, that would have, I know that sounds really gross and terrible. And yes, it is perfect for that scene. <laughs> I, I felt I like he right to the head. I'm like, what's that about? You have yeah, another yeah. arm? You have a, <laughs> what the hell, man? You just cut it short. So that, that was my sadistic weirdness about it. But I feel like this movie is so over the top. That I was kind of surprised. I mean, over the top in the kills, but very again, art house, beautiful intentionalness. That when you see the violence, you're like, what? 
<laughs> well, yeah, and, and the the ranger deserted because he was so stupid. And then at the end, there's <laughs> he was there's, so there's, there's a couple left, and the guy just does something so idiotic. You know, if you remember that scene, like, what are you doing? Uh, and then, like, <sighs> and of course, the killer just like smashes him to bits. What we'll do is we'll set a trap. For yeah, this like, guy who is an undead, unstoppable killer, and we're going right. to outsmart him. No, you're not. Yeah. First and of all, the, just get out of there. What do you need yeah. to hang around for? <laughs> right. And the final girl just sort of looks, and it was kind of like, and then she starts running away. And then it was kind of an interesting, in the last 10 minutes, she's picked yeah. up by this woman in the truck. They that have a conversation. And it's like a weird Long way to end the movie. Long 10 minute conversation about, you know, like what was, what's going on. And the director, Chris Nash said, that's the most important part of the film. So I watched it again saying, well, what, what is the secret here? What so am what I missing? Was it? You know, I, all I can tell you is the actress who played the driver, the, the right. woman, she was, um, well, she was in Friday the 13th part two. Right. She, that uh, much. So I don't know if there's some kind of weird connection there with that series, and maybe she knew something like she was talking in a way that I might have felt like maybe she kind of knows what's happening in the woods and knows what happened to it this woman. Like it. Maybe. Cause I, I feel like what, and I kept thinking, was it her husband? That's the, I don't know. You're right. I, I or, didn't or, connect or, any thoughts on that scene. Like I was trying to think, is she telling her background information, not knowing it, that explains who the guy is and it's someone she knows. And she's actually defending the guy. Like I thought she's going to end up like, just like Jason Voorhees mom, she's going to end up in the end finishing the job because she's protecting you know, right the, the and killer. i thought that but that yeah but that doesn't really happen. happen but the so, one thing i did like about that was you know hmm. then you have the last shot like they stop the car and she's sitting there and she's like we gotta go we gotta go we gotta go and then she just looks into the woods and i'm looking like oh the guy's gonna come out of the woods and you're looking looking it's a long scene just on this random forest scene this very dense right. forest you're looking at it, like you're trying to find it and that's it nothing's there but see, what I liked about it is that that is her life now. That is it. Like she's going to be looking at the forest, looking, watching her back. And I like that we were, you know, that's going to be her the whole time trying to see through the trees to see if that guy is still there. I love that idea. Now or the whole he, lead up to it, I didn't really understand. <laughs> I didn't either. And if anybody out there knows more, because like I said, the director yeah. talked about it. So yeah. we're missing something or maybe that's what it is. But right. if you have any sort of insights, please, you know, uh, add those to the comments because I'd love yeah. to read about what you think that ending meant because it was obviously yeah. there for a reason. It's not like yeah. this big sort of blow up ending. It's, it's like a 10 minute, 10 minute conversation and yeah. then a couple of shots of the woods. Like, is Bobby going back to his resting place? Is that, are we all good or so? Is everything good? You got your necklace it, back? Everything's but, fine. But that made it in uh, the whole yeah. movies. When it was interesting. It took chances, yeah. did something different. It so uh, I can't different. wait. And I, I enjoyed it very much. So if you're in the mood for something different, and there you and go, there's, um, it's, it's totally worth your time. Yeah, it's really when well is, shot. I mean, when is the last time you saw a beautiful poster for a serial killer movie? Like, <laughs> this is just a gorgeous shot. Like, I love the sunset. Like, everything about this is anti. You know, we have the just really nice, you know, uh, serif type. It's just all very clean. Everything's kind of let it out. It's like, you know, it's like just gorgeous. And he just has a little weapon there. Those two weapons, the hooks or whatever. So you see that and you know, he, something's off, but it's just a beautiful poster. And then we have a little bit more standard serial killer poster, but still great, like black and white. You just, you know, it's very graphic, which is also another kind of cool way to do it. Whole different type. And then they did a series of these, like these kind of old school, like, you know, cards right. that you see in movie theaters that are pretty cool right. with scenes from the, from the. Yeah, it's movies. cool. So that's kind of cool. They have a bunch of these, but cool campaign cool vibe like they knew they had something special so now that this year we've had two really special and i love it slasher films we had you know terrifier 3 which technically has been creating this series of movies for years but now has really reached a pinnacle and took off at the box office and we have this movie which was a whole new way to see a serial killer movie so i i like that we think we've seen it all and we have a lot of times i watch zero I, I love slasher movies they're my favorite so i watch them all the time this right. was really outstanding, and not only in the way they handled the kills, which was all practical, it's just the sheer over-the-top craziness of that one scene. But, so I, I really admired this film, and I do not think it's boring in any way. Like, not it at all. And I love the art house aspect of it. It is it is an artier version of a slasher film, and it's just doing something you haven't seen before. And if you take a slasher films have been done to death, and you, you yeah. if you do something different with it, and it still works. I mean, that's quite an accomplishment. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to Chris Nash's yeah. next film. Yes. And because uh, he's a director to watch for sure. 
definitely. So highly recommend. Check it out. And if you know what, what's going on in that conversation yeah, at the please end, please us. let us know because we're a clue. We're not very smart. We <laughs> don't understand smart. the finer points of that. So if anyone understands what the hell that was about, let us know. And uh, we'll talk to you guys later. We like movies. That's about it. What are you going to do? I mean, we watch movies. We're not, we're not scientists. We don't know what's going on. <laughs> All right. Bye. <laughs>